Today what we're going to be doing is setting up a more permanent backfeed for my generator so that it, number one, is functional and it looks nice and I also don't have to jerry-rig everything. Let me show you exactly. So what I want to be able to do is and power up my panel and make sure that I'm able to run um, my freezers, make sure that my well pump is able to run over in my well house, and then also that I have heat. I have a pellet stove in the shop. I have a mini split for heat that has a heat pump on it, but I want to make sure that I can run that, my electricity, my lights, my internet, and things like that, so that if the power goes out, and it probably won't go out for more than 24 hours at a time. Typically that's been, I think the longest that we've been out without a power is maybe 12 hours or so. But since we have um, periodic outages and it happens actually pretty frequently in the winter time, I wanna make it so that there's a more permanent setup for my generator. All right, so here is my panel. I have a 400 amp service. It is split between this, which is where my house power is it's running over to my barndo right there that we're building this 200 amp service is going to be going over to another house that we build later on down the property we got this panel specifically because it has 400 amp service that can be split into two 200 amp panels and service large houses so that all being said there's a few things that i think are really important about this panel it's important to note um if the power goes out we don't want to energize the power line so that somebody working down a uh, line would get electrocuted if they're on. So what we do is we set up our 50 amp circuit that feeds our house. Obviously it's not a 200 amp circuit. We can't run our whole house, but it'll let us keep on our heaters. It'll let us keep on our well, um, that kind of stuff. So we're back feeding our panel, but we're turning off the power to the main line. And that's really, really important from a safety standpoint from the guys that are working on the lines. We don't want to create an unsafe situation where they have this set up. So when you're doing a backfeeding of your panel, you want to be able to turn off the power, okay? When you're basically feeding energy into your house. That's really, really important. If you don't understand how to do that or what I just said, I would say hire an electrician to have somebody come out and do this for you because it's really important that you keep the linemen safe from getting shocked in the event that there is a power outage. So this is my generator and this is the line right here. I have this um, X surface mount box that I'm gonna be putting on right here. And then I have this, um, I'm making a pigtail that goes from my generator into this uh, connection right here. So my generator, it can run on both gas and natural gas, which is cool, but we have a 50 amp setup here and it has a 50 amp setup, which is why I'm running a 50 amp breaker on the panel. So right from here, I've got, this is going to my well pump right here. This goes to the generator. And so when the generator is turned off, sorry, when the generator is not running, I turn this off because I don't want to energize my generator or anything like that. So this stays off right here while the generator is not in use. When I turn the generator on, I flip that switch after turning off my main 200 amp service. Right now my panel is hot. I don't suggest working on a hot panel because it's dangerous. So just wanted to say that <laughs> don't do something that you don't know what you're doing. If you don't know what to do, if you feel nervous about it, just hire an electrician, okay? It's important to note. Just hire an electrician, it's not worth getting hurt over. Also, a quick note here. So if, if I wanted to turn off the power, I'm gonna be working on this hot. Again, not advised, but I'm gonna be putting in this 50 amp, put my two hots, my two conductors right here into that, um, and I will get that uh, hooked up and heated up. But even if you turn off this power here, we still have a hot bar in there that is always energized, no matter what, okay? So as long as this power is hooked up, this is always energized. So my suggestion would be that if you're working on your panel, turn off your power. I don't want to turn off the power, the well water, all that stuff in my heat right now. So I'm leaving it on, but I have experience in this and I'm not, not nervous about that. I'm going to be very careful, but you could turn off your panel and then you'd be a lot safer. Okay. All right. So I've disconnected that 50 amp circuit right now. So what I'm going to do is cut this open, 
uh, sheath it off, get everything set. Now, I understand this isn't a weatherproof cover, by the way. I'm gonna get to wiring this right now. I think that the wind might be too much that it'll blow over my camera. So I'll show you what I've done in the end here. Okay, so I got this hooked up to the 50 amp. And that's it. So the process for this is that when the power goes out, this 50 amp breaker remains off. When the power goes out, come out here, turn off the main going back to the power pole, turn on the generator, get it going, um, and then flip the 50 amp breaker on. Now there is another step in between there that is very important that we should talk about. So it's important that you have your main panel for your house properly labeled because when that power goes off you have to figure out what you want to be running. That obviously cannot run everything. It has 50 amp. I believe it has 4800 watts. Um, I'll put down in the description this exact unit. But it can't do an unlimited amount of work and so if you overload it and put too much load on it it will turn off so when i come to my panel here i have to make sure and turn off the things that are not super important so i can have lights on i can have uh, a couple 20 amp circuits on that are not going to take so much load that it has to run the whole house so typically when my power goes out i will have my well pump on i will have light circuits on some plug circuits on um, i will have my freezers going and then um, that's my garage plugs which has another heater I turn off my water heater my electric water heater is these uh, circuits right here which are tremendously draining um, I also turn off my electric oven so that I don't have that running I turn off my dryer the way that I have my generator set up is so that I can comfortably run and live while the power's down um, it's not a permanent solution by any means but it lets me have all of the comforts of home um, that I need to have in the interim while I'm waiting for my power to come back on. Obviously, if I had like a solar array and stuff in the system that made me completely off-grid, I would be managing this differently. But I think for most people, this setup is, you know, my generator was 850 bucks. Uh, the, um, and that really keeps me from having situations where I'm gonna be freezing or having my food spoil or things like that, which is really, really important. All right, so I've got my panel cover all wrapped up and that right there is the plug. I'm gonna be using my RV plug. Um, at some point I will, I just wired this up real quick here, just to the pigtail, just because I have it extra, might as well. Um, but I have a um, surge protector that I'm gonna use right now. And I think that would be uh, just keep the generator extra safe. But um, this is definitely not a solution that's like for permanent if off-grid living. If I uh, had situations where power was going out for weeks at a time, then I would have a different setup for sure. But again, this keeps me good for a day or two if there was a power outage that lasted that long. Typically power outages are lasting you know, 12 to 18 hours at most. And so um, this gives me a good solution just to get through that type of a thing. But um, I'll put a link to the generator that I have, um, and I'll probably do a video about load calculations for figuring out how big of a generator you need to have as well. But if you have any questions, be sure to pop them down in the comments below. And if you like this kind of content, I'm building a house right now in northern Idaho. At some point, we're going to be off-grid. Right now, we are still dependent on the power grid. But um, if you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe, comment, and let me know if there's anything that you think um, or have questions about. And we'll see you on the next video.